Hey there! So today we're going to make Bakugo Katsuki's Hero Mask from the anime My Hero Academia. We're going to be making this mask entirely out of paper mache and the materials you need for this are affordable and very easy to find. I say this cause while I was looking for other tutorials of this mask, I found that they all required EVA foam, a heat gun, and a Dremel. None of which I had. So if you're also looking for an alternative method that doesn't need those materials, this tutorial is for you. Let's get into it! Part 1. Preparations Stuff you will need I'm gonna start by cutting out three pieces of aluminum foil that are a little bigger than my face. Take one of the pieces and gently press it on your face. Take your time to carefully press and mold the foil into your features. Although you don't need to spend too much time on the area below your nose, as we won't need that for this mask. Mainly focus on defining the nose, eyebrows, forehead and cheekbones. Once you're happy with how it looks, put it back on your face, add the second layer of foil on top, and start molding it to your face like before. And once again, put it back on and add the third layer on top of the other two. After I was done and happy with how it looked, I used some tape to keep all the three layers together so that they wouldn't slip out of each other. These three layers put together give us a more firm surface to work with. Also, make sure that the foil reaches up to your hairline from the top and to your ears from each side of the face. Now, let's get on to preparing the paper mache stuff. To make the glue mixture, put two parts glue and one part water in your cup and mix well. The consistency should be neither too sticky nor too watery. Here's a list of substitutes you can use for PVA glue. After preparing the glue mixture, I'm gonna start shredding my newsprint into smaller strips. They don't need to be identical and neat. Now we're all ready to start making the mask. Part 2 Paper mache. Stuff you will need. Grab a piece of paper and dip it into your glue mixture. Then, very gently place it on your foil mold. While applying this first layer, you need to be careful not to press too hard as it can easily bend and change the shape of the foil underneath it. Keep going adding more strips of paper and gently pressing them into the shape of the foil. 
As you can see, I'm covering all over the forehead and cheekbones and nose. However, we won't be covering the eyes or anywhere below the nose. Bakugo's mask also has the detail of two spikes on the cheekbones. So I'm going to add an extra strip around the same area for making that detail. After finishing each layer, you need to wait for it to dry completely before moving on to the next. If you want, you can speed up this process by using a hairdryer. You can then go ahead and start covering your mask with the next layer of paper mache. As you keep adding more layers, you'll notice your mask getting stronger and more firm. And we want to make sure that our mask doesn't fall apart when we remove it from the foil, so I'm going to continue this process over and over until I reach 9 or 10 layers. This is my mask after 10 layers of paper mache and as you can see, it's become pretty strong and solid. Make sure that the paper mache has completely dried and then carefully start removing the foil. Our next step is to cut this base into the right shape. I drew out this template, which you can find in the description, and it's basically what we want our mask to look like. So what I need to do is cut out this template, and then fix it on the base, so that I can trace the design onto it. But a problem we have is that this flat paper template can't really fit into the curves of the base without wrinkling up or tearing apart. So that's why I decided to cut the template in half horizontally. And this made it possible for me to tape the template flat against the base with no problem. I then proceeded to trace the design onto the base. You can later remove the tapes and fill in the spots that they were covering. The next step is to cut along these lines. So get yourself a strong pair of scissors and or cutters and start cutting your mask. 
This step is kind of tough since it's not so easy cutting through all those layers of paper mache, but it's so satisfying to see your mask begin to take shape. I left the eyes for last as they were kind of tricky. I noticed that in some spots where the design was supposed to go, I had no paper mache base under it, meaning that I had made the eye holes too big. But not to worry, we can fix that. First, I cut out the parts that I had marked. I noted the places that I wanted to fill in and then I got out my hot glue gun. Basically, I'm using the hot glue to fill up the empty spots. And you can easily change and control the shape of this blob of glue with the hot tip of the glue gun. If you don't have a hot glue gun, you can do this with tiny bits of paper mache, but it will probably take a lot of time and patience. Another easier solution is to cover the eyes as well when you're making this base. This way, you'll be able to cut out the whole eye shape however you want without having to worry about something like this happening. After you're happy with how it looks, go ahead and use small bits of paper mache to cover all around the eye holes. Another cool thing about this method is that you can add on any details that you like using the paper mache. This part is totally optional and based on your own preference. If you want to give your mask bold eyebrows to emphasize the angry expression, this is what you want to do. Take a small piece of paper and fold it up into a thin rectangle. Stick it on your mask using hot glue and then use paper mache to smooth it out and blend it into its surroundings. I'm not doing that in the video right now because I didn't want the eyebrows and I'm just smoothing it out with masking tape to give you an idea of what it would look like. Now you might have noticed how bumpy and uneven the inside of the mask is. To fix this, there's three things we can do. 1. Use sandpaper to even out the surface like I'm doing. 2. Apply a single layer of paper mache all over the insides. And 3. You can do both if you want it to be extra smooth. For me, I'm just gonna go with the sandpaper.
The next step is making those spiky thingies on the sides of the mask. This template will also be down in the description. I'm gonna cut out this template and trace it on some paperboard. This could be a cereal box or any other packaging similar to that. And don't forget to draw two of them. Fold over those little flaps and glue them to the inside of the mask. These pikes are kind of fragile and can easily bend and break. That's why we need to cover them with a few layers of paper mache. If you do have masking tape, I suggest you use that first to cover all over the surface and then cover it with paper mache. The reason for this is that the moisture from our paper mache glue is going to make the paperboard wet and thus cause it to get wavy. The masking tape will prevent this contact and keep your paperboard straight. And lastly, we need to cover all these other edges of the mask with paper mache. Part 3. Painting. Stuff you will need. This step is fairly simple and all you need to do is paint all over your mask with black paint. If you have spray paint instead, it'll make your work much easier. While painting the inside, I'm gonna leave out the spot where I want to attach the string 
as we're going to paint over it later. Next is to attach the string. First, I fix the string on my mask with some tape so that I can try it on and make sure it's the right size. After gluing the strings to my mask, I used one layer of paper mache to cover it up. And finally, you can paint over that spot and you're all done! Hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you make this, make sure to share a picture of it with me on my social media accounts. The link to those will be in the description. Also comment below what you would like me to make in future videos. Like, subscribe, blah blah blah. And tell me in the comments what you thought of this. Okay, bye!